All right, so we're gonna get our first look into the ads manager that we have newly created. And at this point, make sure that you have already accomplished the following steps. And that is, you have created a business manager account, and that's why we're seeing this. We had also created your ad account, and that's why we're seeing this. You had also added your payment method, and you have at least added one page, whether it's a page that you already have, or a page that we have newly created, such as this one. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna take our first look into the Ads Manager account. So how do we enter the Ads Manager account is by clicking on this, or you can even click on the Ads Manager on the left here. So it all goes to the same place, all right? So this is the place where you're gonna create your campaigns and advertise from. So as a brand new account, you're not gonna see anything here whatsoever. And if you are an absolute beginner, then uh, you might be thinking like, what am I looking at right now? So don't worry, I'm just gonna guide you through every step of the way and make sure that by the time we're done with this video or the entire training, you will have a clear understanding of how Facebook advertising works. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to configure your ads manager column first. So I'm not gonna talk about the campaigns, I'm not gonna talk about ad set or ads, I'll cover that in another video, but right now it's important that we see the details or the data that we wanna see. So normally by default, you will be seeing this thing called columns performance. And yes, it's a bit hard to imagine right now because we haven't run anything whatsoever. We haven't created anything just yet, but I want us to get off on the right foot and a right start. So what we're gonna do is follow my lead here, okay? Just follow me closely, click on columns performance, and you're gonna see that there are many types of data that you can actually see, but we're not gonna use any of this. We're gonna do it things our way, all right? Click on Customize Columns. And, okay, for absolute beginners, this might seem rather overwhelming. It might seem a little bit crazy. I remember when I did this the first time, I was overwhelmed as well. But follow me closely, all right? Follow me closely. Now. I'm doing this with the intention that we are going to be tracking the number of leads, but you can also use this to track like purchases or completed registration or any other things you want to see. All right. Right now, what we're going to do is that on the right column here, we're going to click X on every single item here. Okay. We're going to click X, which basically means it removes the, the column. And now we're just left with one column called the campaign name. Now this is the only thing that cannot be removed. So I'm gonna share with you the metrics or the columns that I normally view. So follow me closely. The first thing we're gonna have a look at is the ad set delivery. Okay, we'll click ad set delivery. Uh, basically this explains the status of the campaign. Is it uh, in review? Is it rejected? Is it active? Is it completed? We will know, all right? So that's called ad set delivery. The next thing we're gonna add is budget, all right? So you might notice that I'm typing the search up here because if you scroll all the way down, there's a lot of things to look at. And I'll be very frank, even I do not know every single item that is over here, but it just goes to show that you don't have to be an expert in everything on Facebook. You only need to know enough how it works and start getting results. So one quick way is to just go to search, type in the word budget. We'll select the first one and there we go. So budget basically means how much are you allocating uh, a day or in total for that ad set or campaign, which again, if you don't know what that means, it'll make sense later, okay? The next thing we're gonna look at is amount spent, all right, amount spent. Now the difference between budget and amount spent is basically budget is how much are you gonna set aside in a day, amount spent is how much money have you spent so far, uh, whether today, yesterday, or the last seven days, or whichever time window you're gonna put afterwards, all right? Uh, not to worry again, all this will be explained to you in due time, all right? So that's the difference between budget and amount spent. The next thing we're gonna look for is we're gonna look at impressions, okay? We're gonna type in the word impressions. There's quite a few here. We'll select the first one, and then we're gonna select the next one called CPM. So CPM stands for cost per 1,000 impression. So what does impression mean? Now, when someone scrolls down their Facebook newsfeed, or Instagram for the matter, and they pass by your, their, your advertisement. Now, whether they are aware of it or not, that counts as one impression. And if someone scrolls by it the second time, that counts as two impressions, even though it might come from the same person. So, cost per thousand impression basically indicates how much are you spending 
for reaching up to a thousand impressions or a thousand um, people scrolling, all right? That's what it means. Now, I want you to know that there's a difference between the word impression and the word reach. So, reach is how many people is this advertisement reaching out to, all right? Impressions, on the other hand, can mean that the same person can actually view your advertisement more than once, all right? So, I'll give you give an example here. If you are getting a thousand reach, it basically means that 1,000 people have at least seen your ad once, all right? Impression, on the other hand, would mean that how many times has it been viewed? So you, it might actually be 500 people viewing the same advertisement twice. So 500 times two would mean a thousand impression. So I'm just using that as an example to illustrate the difference between reach and impression. Now, personally, I will not include reach here because I think that's not so important. Uh, we're just gonna leave it with impressions and cost per a thousand impression. I'm also gonna explain to you slowly that um, depending on which country or which audience you're targeting, <coughs> typically if you are targeting countries such as the United States, European Union, uh, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, or countries that are considered as tier one countries, you'd be fortunate if you're getting uh, $40 or below for cost per thousand impressions. So I'm just using this as a benchmark. On the other hand, if you're aiming for Asian countries or Southeast Asian countries, it is possible to get uh, $10 or below for the CPM, all right? Now, don't be too obsessed with the cost per thousand impression. I'm just giving you a, as a benchmark on what to look out for because at the end of the day, the most important metric is the cost per result, as in like cost per lead, cost per purchase. That to me is the most important metric to look at, which we're gonna get to afterwards. Next thing we're gonna add, okay? is link clicks. So you can see there's quite a number of choices here. We're gonna click the first one, link clicks, and CPC, cost per link click. That means how many people are clicking on your post or the link in your Facebook ad, okay? And how much does it cost to actually get them to do it? So for example, if you spend $100 and you get 100 clicks, that means you're spending $1 a click to uh, have people visit your website from your Facebook advertisement, okay? So that's what we're looking at right now. And uh, this is important to an extent, not so much about a cost per click, but more like sometimes when you're doing a split test, you wanna make sure that enough people are clicking on your website to make a decision. So some people make the mistake of removing their advertisement a little bit too soon. They say it's not performing after uh, quite some time, but they realize that not even a hundred people have visited their website. So normally for me, when I do a split test, I want to make sure that at least a hundred people have been to my website to determine the conversion rate because it's a lot better to determine after at least a hundred to 200 or even a few hundred people visit your website compared to someone who's like, you know, you've only got like 20, 30 clicks and you decided that the campaign was a failure, okay? So you don't want to be jumping to conclusions like that. All right, next. We're gonna go with this thing called CTR, okay? CTR stands for click-through rate. So we're gonna select two types, CTR in bracket link click-through rate and CTR all. So you might be wondering what is the difference between these two? So click-through or in bracket link click-through rate is basically someone who has clicked on the link or the post in your uh, Facebook ad, okay? So normally I would like to aim for 1% and above. So if 1% and above, it means that people are clicking on your uh, advertisement, people are noticing it. For every 100 cold audience, at least one person is clicking on the ad, and to me, that's considered good. If you're doing a 1.5% to 2% and above, then you're doing rather phenomenal. Now, with that said, you might be wondering, what's the difference between these two then? Like, what's CTR in bracket all? Like, how is that different? So if you write long posts, or when someone clicks on like or comment, then that will contribute to the click through here as well. So you will normally find out that the CTR in bracket all would always be higher than the CTR in bracket link click through rate. So as a rule of thumb, if I find that the CTR all is at least double the rate of CTR link click through, then I think that's considered rather good. So for example, if I'm getting a 1% click through rate, which is considered good, uh, the higher the better, and the CTR all is like two to three percent, 
then I would consider this as a healthy advertisement. That means people are at least clicking on see more, they're clicking on uh, to like, comment whatsoever, then, then we know that people are taking notice of the advertisement, okay? So, now all these are fine and dandy, but like I said earlier, the most important thing is always the results. So if you are running a lead generation campaign, we will type in the word leads, okay? We'll click on total and cost, all right? So you might notice in leads here, there's website leads, offline leads, on Facebook leads, we don't need that. We'll just uncheck all of this, all right? We'll uncheck all of this because we only want to see what, what kind of leads we're getting at the end of the day and the cost per lead. So if you're running a lead generation campaign, this will be the most important metric compared to the others. All right. So for example, if you spend a hundred dollars and you got fifty leads, that means you're spending two dollars a lead right now. Okay, it's as simple as that. So yes, that's really um, all there's to it. You can add any other metrics that you want to, but like I said, this is the the simplest that I would like to keep, and I'll leave it at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on save as preset at the bottom left here, and let's just call it lead gen. Okay, and click on apply. So every time we create a campaign, we'll view it based on the budget, amount spent, impressions, cost per thousand impression, link clicks, CPC, uh, which means cost per link click, link click through rate, CTR all, leads and cost per lead. Okay, and uh, as an added note, if you wanna make sure that this is the default settings that you see every time you log into your ads manager, you will click on columns, click on set as default, and we're done. That's it. So every time we log in here, like I'm gonna just refresh this right now, we will see the lead generation columns as the default. Because if you didn't do that, you will always see performance uh, or, or the other default settings like this. Okay, that's not what we want. We want it to be lead generation. And if you want to configure the columns again, just go back to columns, click on customize columns, and you can remove or add or, or even rearrange the columns as you see fit and click on apply yes that's really all there is to it okay so i just want to send you off on the right track and i'll see you in another video